Um, and I'll give you a bonus overview of the program. So let me share with you the screen of my presentation. After that, I will be more than happy to uh, answer any questions that uh, may remain uh, unclear. But let me try to uh, share the screen. Are you seeing the screen now or not? No, not yet. So let me share the screen. No, Professor. This one. Now it should be shared. Is that okay now? Yes, yes. Now we can see it. Okay, very good. So, question we are trying to answer here today is, um, well, why um, should you, any of you, engage in mastering parts in economics? Okay, there is an obvious answer to that, but um, there is more than that. The obvious answer is that, well, it might help you to get a good job, an interesting position, either in the public uh, sector or in the private sector for the firm. It's job like a firm. But before uh, reaching that goal, uh, well, you have to learn what you need in order to um, be able to, to be hired. So what is what we need? Uh, well, what we are actually are going to get from an MA in economics. So to put it um, simply as possible, if I will have to summarize it in some way, I would say that well, is the ability to reason about economic and social issues that are very complex, that sometimes uh, prompt simplistic answers, but the complexity of them actually make these answers not adequate. So your goal as an economist would be to provide actually answers to problems, to complex problems that need to be formed with precision, being rationally consistent and carefully so that well, you take into account all the possible consequences of what you recommend. Right? For instance, if you want to raise some uh, uh, funds uh, to for public works and you say, okay, it's enough to raise taxes here and there, but you have to take into account how economic agents, households, firms are going to react to that because it may turn out to be the case that by raising taxes actually you raise less money just because of the tax base reduces because agents devote their efforts in other things. Anyway, I don't want to enter into those details, but what I mean is that, um, Things are complex and need to be carefully thought of through in order to give a, a good recommendation that is going to work. So that would help you nuance your analysis, to help you instead of providing uh, answers that are simple, well, the answers that take care of all the consequences of what you recommend. Um, in order to do that, well, all the analysis has to be based in information that uh, you that you have to have about the, the reality. So in order to get that uh, information, you have to have the tool, oops, this is not, you have to have the, the tools in order to extract information from data, data, and then from that information to have some insights, some understanding of what is going on. So all this and more is what an MA is going to provide to you that will allow you to provide recommendations either for a firm or for a, for a public authority that are based in information and analysis rather than on mere opinion. It's easy to give an opinion, but most of the time, if that opinion is not grounded on an analysis and information based on evidence, then opinion most likely will lead to, to wrong conclusions. Okay. Now, another reason why you may want to pursue an MA in economics is, uh, as a stepping stone in order to get into a PhD in economics or in finance or in management. So if you, you will see in a moment what are the careers that you may pursue after an MA in economics, one of them, on top of, as I said at the very beginning, looking for a job in the private sector or in the public sector, one of them would be actually to pursue an academic career. And for that, well, you need a PhD that is going to take you even farther down this line of understanding better 
um, how economics, uh, what economics can tell us about the world and how actual economies work. Okay. Now, um, obviously, if you don't want to pursue an academic career, the skills that you are going to acquire in an MA in economics here are adaptable to many working fields that necessarily are not in economics, could be in, as an economist, but also as a complement to other, other disciplines. Okay. Um, so is it for you? Uh, all of you may be wondering, well, that's very fine, but is it what I really want or what I really need? Well, it depends on your goals. Okay, so I, what I'm going to say is, well, for whom uh, would be adequate to pursue an MA in economics if uh, he or she has uh, goals uh, like uh, following ones or close to them? Well, an MA in economics is um, a liver worth uh, uh, investing in if you have an objective that is like the qualifying for jobs in the government sector or in the private sector as an economist that require skills and expertise that go way beyond what you may have had from your undergraduate studies. Okay? We can always learn more. We can always have um, more expertise and skills. And unfortunately, well, undergraduate studies give you the background and the base for uh, in order to, to, to build a good uh, career, they are not enough for many jobs. So if you want to have the jobs that are most interesting or the best pay, um, you better invest in more than your undergraduate studies and get skills that a master uh, gives you. Now, as I said before, if you have as an objective to pursue a PhD program in a top university in the US or in Europe, well, an MA in economics uh, is going to provide you uh, with the um, background in economics and mathematics that is required for admission in those uh, programs for admission and to excel in them. So um, even if you if none of these two objectives were your objective, it could be useful also if you want to have it as a complementary education to other fields like uh, political science or mathematics or plenty of colleagues actually that I know of in my career actually started as mathematicians and then turned into, into economists as a researcher. Or uh, same for political science, or if you want to, have to work in public health or as a statistician, or you want to complement your uh, education as engineer, or even if you practice law, having a master in economics actually might help and boost your career a lot. Now, um, what will you get from this master in particular? So um, what you will specifically, I will go later on to provide an overview of the program itself, but um, in a few words, what you will learn is to have the academic research analytical skills that um, provide you a solid understanding of the backbone of economic theory, which is uh, microeconomics and macroeconomics. Um, there are obviously, like, like in many fields, many subfields or issues that can be dealt with, but if you don't have a good uh, education in the backbones of the field, which are micro and macro, you might struggle in, um, in enlarging your understanding of all the problems uh, as you pursue your your uh, education. But, so that's why, first of all, a solid understanding of uh, macro and micro. Um, learning how to, uh, or being exposed to a wide array of um, models, economic models, and, and understanding actually what they are useful for and what are their shortcomings. Because as equally important as how do I use a model or an analysis to a problem is to understand where I cannot use it, where it would lead me to the wrong answers. So being aware of shortcomings is equally important as the applicability of the models. Now, you, in order to do all this, also will be exposed to the state of the art, analytical, statistical, and computational techniques that nowadays economics require, um, because many problems on top of 
being analyzed um, theoretically, you need to apply sometimes because uh, the analysis cannot take you uh, much farther than at some point, you have to make some numerical uh, um, exercises or uh, numerical modeling that um, helps you to apply better your uh, analytical understanding of the problem to apply it to the problem in particular that you are dealing with. Those um, tools obviously will be covered by the program too, so that you can conduct like a metric analysis and statistical analysis applying um, models and packages, software packages that allow you to provide specific answers. Now, you obviously will have to, we have, you will be acquiring expertise in applying all these theoretical and quantitative tools to uh, all kinds of actual problems. Um, overall, that will give you a, an ability to review and critically uh, have an opinion of uh, the, about the uh, body of research, especially if you want to pursue an academic career, the body of research in economics that is actually being produced right now. Um, so um, once you have all this, um, you learn all these um, uh, um, tools and techniques and uh, theoretical background, as important as all this is, is to learn, and you will learn to do that too, uh, to communicate uh, in an efficient way, uh, whatever you, your analysis, whatever recommendation you have to make um, about a decision made in a firm or a policy recommendation by a governmental body, you have to learn to communicate properly, okay? So once we have gone over what would you learn, why, why would you have to learn at Masata Yet University? Well, the short answer to that question is that what we provide here is, in short, a program that is um, uh, matched, if you want, by uh, copying best practices to any good top program of a Western university, either in the US or Europe. Obviously, it's all in English, but you can have, uh, by following this program, a Western style MA economics program while you're here in Kazakhstan. So how do you achieve that? Well, by being exposed to highly trained and internationally recognized faculty that has been has graduated from uh, top uh, US and European universities. Now, the quality of the program also is enhanced by the fact that we have a strategic partnership with the University of Wisconsin at Madison. Uh, so that we make sure that uh, the, the old best practices are uh, implemented here as well. And it helps us coaching junior faculty and also in the admissions process for the students uh, in our masters. So uh, you can take that as a, as a guarantee of quality as well. Um, by, I mean, good and one reason, which always helps, is that Nazareev University provides you with free tuition, housing, and actually a monthly stipend, which comes very handy as well. Um, also, the fact that if you want to focus on analysis on Kazakhstan firms or uh, economy, uh, well, be staying here in Kazakhstan allows you to get um, access to data and opportunities that if you are abroad, you wouldn't have, or not as easily. And also, um, by uh, obviously the, what Nazarev, what the program actually the university gives you is the opportunity to um, participate in any talk, presentation, lectures by any of the guests from all over the world that we <coughs> regularly have, and from local faculty as well, of course. So finally, if you if one of your objectives, in order to, to, to argue why Masato Yev University, one of your objectives is to um, <clears throat> get a job into um, the public sector or becoming a government consultant or policymaker. Well, obviously, the fact that the university is in University of Tan, that uh, it helps a lot. And that doesn't need to be argued at length, okay? Because you can have close access to, to the relevant venues. Now, Another view of the program itself. The program is, as, um, as I said, a top 
uh, Western University um, organized in four semesters, okay, uh, fall and spring semester in two years that cover the courses that you are seeing on the screen right now in the first semester, running from August to December of the uh, first academic year, you have, as I said, then you are exposed to the backbone of the economics uh, science, which are micro and macroeconomics at an advanced level. So we go into the really, not just what you have seen in the undergraduate, but really into the details of uh, how things work and why and beyond, and going beyond the undergraduate level. You are exposed to obviously a proper course of statistics and of mathematical economics, because if you have not noticed it yet in your undergraduate, you will certainly notice for the um, graduate, uh, at the graduate level, that economics is a heavily mathematical discipline, um, both in, in the analytical sense and the statistical econometrical sense, okay? So in the second semester, while you're training in micro and macro would continue, uh, you have a course in econometrics that uh, allows you to get into advanced techniques. You get a course in research methodology, which is basically a course in uh, quantitative methods that are, is going to prepare you to do what you, the main thing that you're going to do in your second year, which is on top of having uh, additional courses, which I will go in a moment, uh, you have to prepare a master thesis, okay? So the research methodology is going to give you additional quantitative tools to write a thesis. I'll speak about the thesis in a moment, but just to complete uh, the program here in the third semester, then you have on top of starting to work with the thesis, some other courses, one of them is applied econometrics, but you have the option of choosing a couple of elective courses, for which I will go in a moment. Finally, in the second semester, well, there's just one elective course to pick because the second semester of the second year basically wants you to focus on delivering with your master thesis. So you need a lot of time to do your own research and uh, writing and polishing the final version of your thesis for the defense. Now, what about the elective courses? Let me give you an overview of uh, courses from which you might elect in your second year. So here you have a sample of the courses, either well, applied econometrics or, let me go over them quickly, but you see that there, are, there is a variety of topics that might interest you. Development economics here, uh, wages and the labor market, basically uh, you have uh, behavioral uh, economics and experimental economics of which you may have heard lately because uh, some of the latest um, uh, Nobel Prizes have been on these issues. Uh, introduction to contract theory, uh, additional econometrics, statistics, industrial organization, topics in macro theory, you name it. Okay. Now what about, uh, so I think that you will not lack on, of course, if we have uh, guests uh, uh, or invited professors the department, there's always an opportunity that they might provide uh, an additional uh, elective course uh, for the, our master students. Now, um, what about the master thesis? Well, the master thesis is basically a proof of what you have learned during the master, and in which you have to demonstrate your competence in research. How? Well, by writing a, basically a, like a paper that might be publishable in a journal the high quality, the article length, uh, manuscript that is a publisher, publishable quality. Of course, you have to defend your thesis as well. So you have to train yourself, and we will be doing that for you, uh, to have an effective oral presentation of the findings that you may have obtained during your research. How precisely you have to do that? Well, by the end of the second semester and certainly beginning of the third semester, you might be uh, already knowing what you like, what you dislike, what interests you and what you just like, or it's not interesting to you, so that you may identify a subject. And obviously along during the master, you are more than welcome to, 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 to ex have exchange with, your, with the faculty so that you can identify an advisor right, to discuss with him or her about the topic so that you identify an advisor that might be willing to uh, supervise your work. So then a thesis committee is set up um, that I as a program director 
uh, approved, but it is basically agreed with the advisor. And that visit committee uh, is consisting of three people, your advisor, another faculty member of the program of department, and then an external member from another university that um, we look for uh, for you, okay? Uh, obviously, in an agreement with the advisor and myself, we discuss, depending on the topic you are working on, who we might contact in order to serve as external member of the committee. Okay. Let me give you an example of recent master thesis. Okay. This is a list, uh, non-exhaustive, um, of, of theses that have been defended in the couple of, last couple of years. So you can see they are from uh, abstract, not abstract, but theoretical theses, uh, theses, like the first one on game theory, uh, the second one on experimental economics, um, but also applied and policy-oriented uh, theses, like uh, you see, for instance, the second report uh, on uh, pension reforms in Kazakhstan, you see in uh, overlapping generations model that the Paul G stands for there, um, or assessing the, the macroeconomic performance of Kazakhstan using the statistical tools uh, that uh, uh, this student in particular was uh, exposed to during the master, okay? So this, uh, <clears throat> I think I've covered mostly what uh, you will be exposed to in the master. What are your career options after the master? Because obviously that is a very important thing that you have to factor in, in your decision. Well, one, as I mentioned before already, but in passing, uh, one option is to, if you really like doing research, is to pursue an academic career. And for that, you will need to have a PhD in economics, finance, or business, accredited after the program. In a moment, I will give you examples of actual um, admissions that we got from uh, for students from our masters into, into universities so that you can uh, assess well, where this can lead you. Or if you don't want to pursue an academic career, well, you can pursue a professional career as a consultant, analyst, forecaster, as an economist, uh, in short, either in the industry or the finance sector or in the government sector or uh, para public sectors or public think tanks, etc., research centers, or in international organizations in order to deliver well, macroeconomic policy analysis, development pricing, data analysis, forecasting, you know. Okay, so this is in principle what uh, the careers you might pursue. Let me give you an example of where our former students got admitted, for instance, for PhDs. We have a list of universities in which uh, uh, some of our students got admitted for a PhD program, just Hopkins, which is the top university in the US, Penn State, very good one as well, Rice, again, a top university. Um, and you have also universities in Europe uh, like, that have accepted our students, uh, Barcelona Graduate School of Economics is a very good one, Frankfurt University is a good one, Central European University in um, uh, um, Prague, uh, Washington University, George Washington University. Okay, so I would, would continue, but you see that you can get admitted at very top universities graduating from our program. If uh, you are thinking of a professional career, well, um, uh, here is a list of actual jobs that people from our program have uh, obtained. Uh, uh, as consultants at like KPMG or uh, working as research in NAC Analytica or in NNY, Ernest & Young, or for gas and I gas or Casink in the Astana International Exchange. So you see that you really have good options too if you want to pursue an academic career. Now, the, um, just a quick view of uh, our faculty. Uh, let me give you the fields in which uh, we are working. Julia, Professor Julia Satria is working on applied theory and financial economics as the head of the department. Myself, I am doing economic theory in general. I'm interested in macro growth, public economics, environment theory, a lot of things. Um, by the way, Julio got his PhD from Luis Levan, myself from uh, EHESS in Paris. Uh, Professor Gilan Kaya got his PhD in Northwestern University. He's doing 
micro theory, game theory, information economics. Um, among the junior faculty, uh, Indian Kim got his PhD in Indiana, the US, and works on empirical industrial organization and applied econometrics. Uh, Professor Cox got his her PhD at field level in Belgium and works in development economics and applied micro. Um, Professor Rubenov graduated from uh, London Business School and works on information economics, contract theory, political economy, game theory. Micro in general is very well represented in our department, but micro too. Melo Ponce, Professor Melo Ponce got his PhD in Stony Brook at the US and works in economics of information, mechanism design, game theory. Professor Altinok, uh, he graduated, got his PhD from uh, Arizona State and uh, works in applied theory and microeconomics. Professor Yabuzogu got his PhD from Wisconsin at Madison and works on labor, public, and applied econometrics and microeconomics. Professor Sagundikova graduated um, his, her PhD uh, at the University of Arizona and works on labor, economics of education, applied econometrics and micro. So you see, we cover all fields that might interest you. Professor Nora graduated, obtained his PhD from UC Van in Belgium and works on applied micro game theory and social networks. Professor Kiriseva got her PhD uh, at the European University Institute and uh, works on applied micro game theory as well, and experimental economic social networks. Professor Polinov got his PhD at Sergei EI in Prague and um, uh, works on labor economics and industrial organization. From the University of Manitoba, Canada, we got um, Professor Dana Pasakulova and works on labor economics and household economics. Um, um, her PhD in Germany in the University of Kiel, Professor Kjatsal Njemova uh, works uh, on computable general equilibrium, uh, equilibrium modeling, applied econometrics, and also environmental economics. We also have senior professors from uh, uh, other universities that regularly visit and you and teach in our program, like Professor Matos Planas, who teaches quantitative macro in our program. He is uh, from Team Mary in London and graduated or obtained his PhD from Control Power in Barcelona. And also Lucas Sala, Professor Sala, got his PhD from uh, university, Free University in Brussels in Belgium and is Professor of Economics at Bocconi University in Milan in Italy and visits us regularly and teaches in our program teaching applied econometrics, monetary economics and dynamic macro as well as time series. So, seeing that I gave you a maybe lengthy overview of our program, how to apply? Well, you need to have a cumulated GPA of at least 275 or 4 or 345 or 5 and have a graduate in any of those uh, disciplines, economics, law, arts and sciences, business, engineering. So, what matters is that you're good. You can have backgrounds that are older than economics, but what matters is that you are really interested in economics and have a good background. You have been a good student, have a good GPA. Now, the way to do it is to fill in the online application. I'm sure Admission is going to give you one more details around how to do it, but you have to provide this a CV, a personal statement about why you do you want to uh, um, pursue a uh, master in economics. Uh, three references, um, some copies obviously of the, of the diplomas that you uh, provide, your um, scores either in IELTS or TOEFL and that have to be as good as shown in the, in the, at least as good as shown in the slide and a copy of your GRE test if you take it is not uh, compulsory but it's preferred that you have a GRE test. They can help you certainly in your application. So some application tips. As I said, um, don't think that if, you're, um, if your undergrad is not economics, this does not apply to you. Even if you haven't had a background in economics, it might interest you 
as long as you're really, really interested in economics and you want to, to work hard towards, um, towards uh, acquiring the skills that are necessary for you. Obviously, the first courses are taught bearing in mind that you need to level the playing field for those that might not have a background in economics. So what it is important is that you are really willing to work hard to learn what you need for a master, not a background. Having said so, having a certain level of mathematical maturity is very important. So a good math background, it would be a significant advantage to your application, okay? Because to be honest, as I have already said, economics is based on uh, relatively sophisticated mathematics. So having a good math background certainly is going to help you. And as last word, I would say that, well, um, maybe it was implicit in my message when I said that your background, as long as you are a good student, might not even be as important is that, well, we are, <coughs> excuse me, we are more than happy to have students of all um, kinds of backgrounds. So in your application, well, don't be shy about telling us about why you are having an interesting profile as a student that may also be an asset to the program and give us also to, to, to the program itself, uh, to your colleagues, students, and faculty. So we welcome diversity among us, and that is a plus rather than a minus for us, okay? So um, if you need any more information, of course, I'm happy to answer any answers you may, any questions you may have. Um, the staff uh, for admissions is here with us so that if you have a specific questions about the procedure to follow in order to, to, to apply, uh, they will be more than happy to help us so that, uh, in giving you the right information. You can always obviously contact me um, as director of graduate studies at the email or directly to my email, um, uh, my personal email or the email you have for admissions on the slide. And well, as uh, Dean said, uh, right now we cannot welcome you in our facilities, but you, when the day comes, will, you, you will be welcomed in our uh, department at, uh, at the campus. Okay. So with that, I. Uh, stop sharing my screen and I'm uh, available for all of you to answer any questions you may have. I said that your micro is off. Um, uh, oh, now it's okay. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Professor, for your interesting and useful presentations. So now, dear guests, please uh, ask your questions. Uh, you may write down your questions in the chat box or ask your questions through a microphone. So uh, we have one question in the chat box. Uh, yes, uh, dear Maulen, the, we will send you the recording of the webinar uh, after the end of the webinar, maybe tomorrow. Yes, I think tomorrow we will send you. So stay tuned. Keep tracking your email. Uh, so, Professor, we have one question from Balvan. Uh, hello, does the program requires full-time study? Yes, the program is devised so that you devote all your time for full-time. You should be clear about that because, I mean, it's a, it's a program that is going to train you for professional or academic life, and it it is not uh, an easy. I mean, you can obviously do it, and we are going to train you and help you to succeed in it, but it's demanding, let's be honest. It's demanding, as I said, it's designed to be up to the best uh, uh, level of uh, top Western pro uh, programs, so you are expected to work fully on it. Okay, thank you. Um, So, uh, dear professor, thank you very much uh, once again for your uh, presentation. You covered mm -hmm. perfectly covered all issues that might be interested to our participants. Uh, also, the admissions procedures, uh, I mean, requirements to apply. Thank you for, for that. 
And um, I, I, I think I can just uh, remind our participants yes, uh, that the, uh, that the online registration is already open now. You are all uh, welcome to apply for the Master of Arts in Economics. Uh, the deadline is April 30. And uh, also, please, um, I can just maybe re remind that um, we have an opportunity uh, also to apply it to the main program. And also, there is an option in the Nazarbayev University. Uh, it's called Nazarbayev University Zero Year of Master's Programs, New Zip. Uh, this, uh, this is a um, uh, two semester full time intensive English and content course program. It is provided by our university for conditional enrolled students. Uh, it means that uh, if you have, uh, for example, a very strong academic uh, background and a strong willingness to apply for this program, but you have a lower uh, IELTS test scores, uh, let's say. 5.5 uh, with the sub score requirements no less than uh, 5.0, then you can uh, be considered as NUZIP applicant. It means that after the completion to this, pro uh, this uh, program, you will be enrolled to the main program. Uh, so there are like differences, uh, there, there are only differences in IELTS test scores, and the rest of the uh, package requirements are the same. So I think this will be interested uh, and useful for applicants. Uh, so that's why I just highlighted this. Yes, thank you, Axiom. Thank you very much. Um, so we have uh, questions in the chat box from Maulen. He's asking, can you give a little information about scholarship? So yes. Maybe officials can do better than that me. That uh, mm -hmm. I don't have the details, but. Uh, what I can say for sure is that once you get admitted, you get an estimate from the university. Maybe the administration can tell more about that. Yes, uh, every uh, student um, is granted with a monthly stipend. And also there is opportunity to be accommodated at uh, a new dormitory. But right now, uh, this option is uh, limited. Um, but I think that next year, the uh, situation will be changed, might be, uh, might be changed. So yes, after the um, admission to enrollment to the NU, you will have an opportunity uh, to live on a campus and to get a scholarship uh, to, um, yes, to, to, to study at NU. <laughs> so yes, and of, of course, uh, also we have an opportunity as uh, Professor Julio de Villa also mentioned, uh, close cooperation with uh, two universities. Uh, we have uh, international agreement with the University of Wisconsin Medicine and University uh, Buffalo. Uh, these are U um, USA universities and uh, the new students uh, have an opportunity to participate in a summer school. Mm -hmm and to be eligible to participate in this, uh, to uh, participate in this academic mobility program, uh, students should be uh, selected um, on a competitive uh, review of all applications by the school committee. This is like another regulations, another procedure, but this all uh, might, uh, this all is uh, available uh, for our students. Um, so yes, I think this also can be uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Asya. Uh, so here's one question from Dana. Hello, what's the duration of the program? The duration of the program is in, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> two years. <laughs> it's two academic years. Yeah, it's, not, it's organized in four semester, fall, spring, fall, spring, in these two years, all you know. The first year is devoted to courses, and the second year is devoted to some courses as well, but basically also to writing your master thesis. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank you, Professor. So, uh, uh, dear 
participants gets, let me please let me remind you that uh, uh, you can always contact us. Uh, I will write down our email address. Um, so you may contact us anytime. Uh, also, you can write to a professor. Um, we will try to help you mm -hmm. and answer all your questions regarding admissions, uh, requirements, uh, program. So, uh, Professor, can you please tell um, why it's important to study economics today, yes, specifically today when it's already like an uh, economic crisis is coming. So uh, why people should be um, aware of the sure. like, economics, yeah. yes? Mm -hmm. yeah, there are plenty of reasons for that. I mean, there, maybe there's, uh, this is one of the most exciting things to study economics. If only because it was already interesting, the times we are living in, because of the uh, last um, financial crisis that we still are feeling the consequences, uh, the last financial crisis of 2008. The world was not uh, completely recovered from that yet, uh, when we have been struck by the pandemic, which is changing everything as well. Sometimes because of the way it has been responded to, sometimes because of the direct impact that the pandemic uh, has on itself. But it is a ongoing, and you just need to, 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 to open newspapers or uh, go online to check news, uh, to, to be aware of the ongoing debate. But how to respond to this? What are the consequences, the economic consequences? How to deal with it and how to go out of the deep, deep recession in which uh, most countries actually, this is actually the only instance of a shock that has affected the entire planet, <laughs> to put it mm -hmm. in short. Uh, because some other crises were localized here or there or in one sector in one country, but this was, has been a global shock because of the need in order to deal with the, especially the initial onset um, of the of the epidemic when we were we didn't know that much about the the um, uh, the epidemic itself um, the, the the immediate initial response was uh, one of shutting down everything because uh, we do, were not that aware of how dangerous it is of course it's dangerous but uh, the uh, response. Uh, now it's being rethought, as you may have seen from the way public authorities uh, are um, dealing with the problem now, in a more uh, nuanced way or targeted. That's a good instance uh, for what I said during the presentation that, well, you have to think of the consequences of the decisions you make. One way of referring to economics is about the science of unintended consequences, because you do something trying to achieve a goal, but you have to be aware of the fact that what you do might actually be counterproductive to that goal because it undermines it through other channels. You have to take everything into account. Well, we live in a world nowadays in which, because of the um, um, shocks to the whole world economy that uh, the pandemic has uh, represented, and it's compounding with the financial crisis of which we were not completely recovered from before, there is a lot of questions. They, uh, even the economic signs have been upended by, by, the, uh, by the events. Things that we took for granted long ago, or well, not that long ago, actually, well, we are not sure about them anymore. For instance, monetary policy had been completely, like since the financial crisis, all the recipes to deal with it that we were using since the 70s just stopped working. And we have to figure out what kind of monetary policy we have to uh, use in order to get economies out of recession, if we can do it that way, which is not clear anymore. But um, for instance, you may have seen, or if not, I tell you right now, that um, major central banks, from Japan to the European Central Bank to other European Central Banks, had in the, lay, in the last three, four years actually been applying policy rates that are negative, which means that actually you, when you borrow, you are being paid to borrow. Does that make sense? Well, the thing is that we have to try to understand that. The reason why that has been done is because after the financial crisis, the credit market just froze. And in order to, to, to make the financial sector 
to release credit in order to help households and firms to, to, uh, uh, to, to re reboot, restart the economy, you had to take the interest rates so low, so low that eventually some central banks decided to take them below zero. So the, um, that's a completely new economics uh, science that we have to develop in order to understand that. So um, it is a fascinating time to understand, to study and, uh, and contribute to economic science. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, we have one question from Molien. So I think I can take uh, yes, this one. Can you please? Uh, yes, Molien, thank you for your question. I uh, said that uh, he got a um, bachelor degree in China in English taught program in that case. Do I still need IELTS? Yes. So um, applicants to this program, they can be exempted from submitting the uh, IELTS and TOEFL certificate uh, in three cases. Uh, the first one is uh, when, uh, if one of the early academic degrees was earned in a country with English as a language of official communication. And uh, the second one is uh, if an, um, on the graduate or graduate degree was earned in a program which was officially taught in English. In this uh, regard, applicants must provide an official document confirming English as the language of instruction. And the last um, case is if the applicant is a graduate of Nazarbayev University. In these three cases, uh, you can skip um, providing uh, IELTS and TOEFL, but you should provide um, like uh, confirmation of uh, that. Uh, I mean, in the uh, second and the third case, it will be uh, the uh, confirmation from uh, university itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Professor, we have one question from Ranaras. Hi, could you have? Uh, could we have extra mass courses for elective course or? double major in math and economics, yes? Okay, for the elective courses, um, that's something that we have to discuss uh, in this case by case uh, uh, situation, um, because um, the program is already quite packed and taking too many courses may, especially in the second year, distract you from your immediate goal, which is uh, like in a master thesis. Of course, it can be argued for some type of research that a specific math courses might be helpful. That's why I said it has to be, yeah, we will go over it and discuss whether it makes sense, uh, yes or no. Could be taken, as I have advised to some uh, students before, even uh, as, a, as a course that necessarily doesn't count for the number of credits for graduating, but it's still useful for the research you are doing. So we, we, that's something we will discuss. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Professor, for your answer. So uh, dear students, uh, don't be shy. Please ask your questions. It's a really great uh, chance to uh, get the answer from the professor and from Asim, from the school's manager for admissions. So mm -hmm. also I would like to, add to the um, answer of the professor uh, to the last question that, that um, we have, our school have, has also a Master of Science in Applied Mathematics uh, program that mm -hmm. also might be interested, but um, there is like uh, different uh, programs, Master of Arts in Economics and Master of Science in Applied Mathematics, they're completely different but uh, maybe also interested. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Asim. So, uh, dear participants, uh, it's already like three minutes left. Uh, I want to tell you that uh, tomorrow will be held, uh, tomorrow will be held a webinar on MA in political science, international relations. Uh, so what do governments do anyway with Associate Professor Karo Schenk. So if you're interested in getting detailed information about this program, please join us uh, tomorrow. And also I want to add that all our webinars are um, posted on our SSH YouTube channel. So if you missed some past uh, webinars, you 
you can uh, go to our uh, YouTube channel and uh, watch them um, and watch them, yes. So uh, no questions. Uh, Asim, do you have any like uh, comments or <clears throat> that you want to add? Uh, well, yeah, I can just uh, remind that um, all participants are more than welcome to. Ah, can you tell shortly about personal essay? Uh, yes, well, personal essay uh, is an um, essay when you um, demonstrate a high level of motivation and strong interest in seeking the uh, master's program. And it should consist of 500, uh, 500 words. So you should try to uh, indicate, specify uh, why, uh, why the admissions committee should choose you uh, to uh, this uh, program. And I think, yes, sh this should also be uh, taken like um, important, uh, like, yes, uh, personal essay is very important in this case. And also the uh, conf letters of recommendations, admissions committee, they look through recommendations as well. Uh, these uh, recommendations, uh, three confidential letters of recommendations should be written within the last 12 months. And uh, it will be better if they will be provided from academia, from the professors you worked with uh, previously, or from the you know, working, um, uh, or from the working experience that is related to economics. So this all um, could help you uh, while, the uh, while the admissions committee will review your package. So can I add a word about the um, essay or motivating letter? Um, when I'm going through, I mean, just me, I mean, anyone that goes to an admission committee as an academic, from the academic viewpoint, um, what uh, you're looking for in, in, a, in a motivation letter is to see the maturity of the candidate, the intellectual maturity of the candidate, whether the candidate is, um, is sufficiently uh, mature to engage in this uh, in such a in such a program, and the goals that he or she has in mind. Okay? So basically, we want to see how mature the candidate is in order to deal with the problem. Yes, Asim, you have any Okay, thank you. So, uh, 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 thank you very much. Um, so, dear participants, um, it's already the time to end our session. So, if you have questions, please uh, uh, write down your questions in the chat box. Um, so, uh, if there are no questions, I think we can end our session, yes. So, uh, dear guests, uh, thank you for joining our uh, online webinar. Uh, the recording of this webinar will be sent uh, to your emails uh, tomorrow. So keep tracking your emails and uh, keep tracking our social media. We have Instagram and so, uh, Facebook pages and uh, our website, I uh, write down the hyperlink so you may go to, to our website and uh, um, read uh, more uh, further about our economics department about uh, the program uh, MA in economics, yes. So um, if there are no questions, uh, I think we can end our sessions. Uh, Professor, thank you very much for, uh, for your presentation, for covering all the questions. So uh, thank you, Asiam, for your help, uh, for answering the questions. Um, thank you, Ezada, <laughs> for hosting. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. well. OK, thank you. Thank you all. So see you tomorrow. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> OK, thank you. Thank you, dear guests. Bye. Yes, thank you. Please apply to this program. Have a nice day. Bye.
Yes. 